well. Stand on your feet. Come on. It's going to be a good day. When darkness tries to roll over my bones, when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own, when brokenness and pain is all I know, no, I won't be shaken. No, I won't be shaken. Come on, sing it. Cause my faith doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My faith doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My faith doesn't stand a chance when I stand in a place to hide because I am not a captive to the lies and I'm afraid to leave my past behind because no, I, I won't be shaken no I won't be shaken cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand How many of you are thankful for his love this morning? Look at someone right now and say, I love his love. Now look at the person on the other side and say, I love you. And I'm going to be his love. Praise God. Welcome, everybody. If you're online, good morning. Welcome to Bethesda Church right here. We want you to know that God loves you and we love you. And if you come, be a part of our services, you'll feel the atmosphere that's happening right now where there is a lot of love. Look at someone. Just love them. Love them. Come on. Love them again with your eyes and smile. It's contagious. It's contagious. This morning, I want to get you a couple of announcements before we move on, and we're going to move right back into worship. But I want to encourage you, everybody in the foyer, there is this ticket right here online. You see that ticket? It's half the size of my head. But if you're here in person, it looks like the size of my head, doesn't it? You can buy one of these mission tickets for $10 in the, in the foyer out there for our missions banquet that's coming up. Make sure you buy one. Uh, we need to know how many people are coming so that we can plan for the catering. Oh, praise God. Catered food for a missions banquet. 
It's going to be a good time. Make plans to be there. Uh, that's February the 13th at 6 p.m. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful night. Please, please let us know that you're going to be coming. Daniel Gore, son, would you just step out down here by that plant for me? Uh, we don't have a spotlight, but he wasn't expecting on me telling him to step out. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you Lieutenant Dan. He's my Lieutenant Dan. I love you, Daniel. Would you please give him a hand clap of love this morning? We love you, Daniel. Stand tall, son. You're in the dress blues this morning. So, Daniel, he's, he's uh, been in the youth ministry with us. And we have some phenomenal youth leaders right back here also joining us today. She had surgery about six months ago, and she's with us. Miss Laura and Kevin Hiles, would you give them some love this morning? And it wasn't even six months ago. She had foot surgery two months ago. I'm sorry. And she's making her way back. We have phenomenal leaders in our youth ministry. Let me tell you, cried a lot of prayers, prayed a lot of times, and laughed a lot of times with Daniel Gore and those two back there. But um, as of tomorrow, Daniel will be heading to Alabama. And he's going to be doing training for about three, uh, 30 days. And then he's going to head to Bahrain. So the reason I wanted to bring him out like that is I wanted you to pray for him. Please pray for his beautiful wife, Mackenzie. I know you're probably watching online, sweetie. Um, she's already made the move back home to where the family is because he's fixed to head overseas shortly. But uh, we love you, Dan. My Lieutenant Dan, thanks for all the work you've done in the youth ministry. These young people love you, and you've made an impression and a mark upon them that only, not those stripes, not that uniform, but the heart of God that's in you, son. We love you. Thank you, Dan, for all your service. Would you give it up for Daniel one more time? We love you, Bubba. Pastor, thank you for letting me have that moment to honor him as he's leaving. Uh, our pastor wanted me to do that. That's a good man. He, I appreciate all he does for our church and how he leads us. This morning, I would ask you to lead your heart in, in the way of giving. We're going to worship the Lord with our giving. And let's just honor him in the way we give with a joyful heart not begrudging, but just saying, Jesus, I love you. Thank you for you providing for me, whether he provided $5 this week or he's provided $5,000 this week. Whatever you give in your tithe and in your offerings, let it go as a say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, because it is all because of you. We love you so much, Lord. And today in this place, we honor and bless the name of Jesus. You are the greatest that we have ever experienced in our lives. There is not a person on this earth that can represent the goodness and the fullness of God like Jesus. So, Lord, we ask this morning as we give, help us to look a little bit more like you. Help us to be cheerful. Help us to be loving in our giving so that it might glorify and honor the Father which is in heaven. And, Lord, we ask that souls would come to know you through the ministries of Bethesda and through the hands and the feet that go and work and, and do all those things that they can for your glory. Let there be souls come to your knowing. We love you this morning and ask your Father to have your way in this service. In Jesus' name, would you say amen? amen. Let's bless God with our giving this morning. Amen. For thou, O Lord, heart high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. For
Come on, exalt him this morning. Hallelujah, Lord. Sing it one more time. I so Come on, rejoice in him this morning. We bless your name. There is no one like you, Lord. You're welcome here, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we are here. You're worthy, Lord. We lift you high. Reveal yourself, Lord. Who Holy are you, Lord? Who lift your voice? You, lift we your voice. Your name, Lord. You alone are worthy. You alone. Lift your voice and worship today. nothing worth more that will ever come close no thing can compare you're my living hope you're my only hope your presence Lord I've tasted the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord Holy Spirit
there's nothing worth more that will ever come close nothing can compare you're our living home your presence Lord I've tasted Sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence, Lord You're welcome here, Lord Holy Spirit
enthroned in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. We make room for you here, Lord. We honor you, Jesus. We bless you. Praise the Lord. Would you lift your hearts and hands across this building? And may we magnify that name that is above every name, the name that we love, that name that we bow before Father in Jesus' name. We bless that name. We bless the name of Jesus. Praise God. That name that has redeemed us and rescued us. That name that has healed us. That name that has provided and protected us. And that name that is coming again for us. We bless that name. We bless that name. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 Praise God. Praise the Lord. And Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this house in our hearts. Because we know that you have come with only one purpose in mind, and that's to lift up that name that is above every name. And I pray that the scales would fall from our spiritual eyes this morning. That we can catch a fresh glimpse of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Give us eyes to see. Give us ears to hear the sweetness of his voice. God, we dedicate this service to your Son and our Savior. May all things be done to glorify and edify his name. And we love you, Jesus. And we love you this morning, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You may be received this morning. Praise God. Anybody in the house love him more than life? Amen. Praise the Lord. Would you give our team a hand of thank you for your ministry this morning? Praise God. Praise the Lord. It's great to have you in the house of the Lord this morning and believing God for a great day. Amen. So look around and just say, I'm glad you're here. Amen. Because... We are glad that you are here. Amen. I want you to know that we pray daily for the Bethesda body, this family, as staff. We pray for you. We pray for your families. We pray for your health. We know we're living in some perilous times. and uh, But God is greater, and God is our default, and God is the anchor of our soul. And we are, not, we are not to be moved by fear, but we're to move in faith, Amen. believing that our God is still able to do all things. Amen. All things are still possible. Amen. You believe this? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we, we appreciate God's faithfulness to us. Just a couple of things before we get into the Word today. Um, simply echoing Pastor Josh, Daniel, we love you and your your family, and it's been a joy to have you in service with us, and it's been a blessing. Can any good thing come out of Missouri? And the answer must be yes. And so our prayers with, are with you as you go, and thank you for your service. Um, we are so indebted to our military across the board that they keep us free. The sacrifices they make, may we never ever take these freedoms for granted. Amen. Freedom is not free. Thank God for this country. And uh, so our prayers with this young man, and he, he does look handsome in his blues. And so if you go to Brahms, I'm sure they'll give you a discount. Amen. I may want to borrow, borrow your blues next week, Okay. But just a couple of things. Um, we want to pray for several families that are part of our body. Um, this last week, we had a homegoing service for Eddie York, 
um, his daughters, Tammy and Rhonda. Tammy, her husband's part of our, our, our church, and Eddie as well. And, and so um, great men of God. So our prayers are with them as they adjust to life without their father. Um, also, uh, Joe Powers, that's part of our church, has been for, for a long time. Her mother passed away a couple of days ago. Her graveside is tomorrow at Seminole, and so we'll be part of that graveside service. Pray for Joe and her family. Um, her mother, Velma, she loved the Lord. She was um, in a nursing home the last, I think, the last year or so, and, and she was known as a revival lady, and she would go from room to room and preach Jesus. Amen. Matter of fact, she was known to to wake them up because you got our days and nights mixed up. <laughs> and that could be scary. <laughs> In the middle of the night, so I was saying, Jesus! <laughs> and so, but a great lady, and so we want to honor her, her life and testament tomorrow. Also, Carrie McClure, him and his wife, part of our family, his mother passed away. Her funeral is Wednesday at 10 o'clock, Southgate Pentecostal Church. Here, I think it's in Moore. And so our prayers with Carrie uh, as well. Amen. Amen. So allow me this morning to just get in the Word. It's 1030. Are you kidding me? I've got an hour and a half. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good all the time. <laughs> Amen. No, I, I won't. I'll just use an hour. So, um, but I've been praying and I always do this at the first of the year. Matter of fact, Starting in November, December, just praying for direction for our church, for my, for our lives, and uh, just pray for a, a rhema word, a word that um, that really speaks to our spirit and it is is divine directive for us as we enter into this new year, twenty two. And I really believe that that God has been speaking some things into my heart. Um, I'm not smart enough to figure out where He's going. But his spirit is in me to lead me in direction of God. For how many knows that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth? And he'll reveal all things to us. And so the first Sunday of the year I preached on just fear not. Do not be afraid. Listen, when we find ourselves fearing the day, it literally throws the door wide open to Satan to attack us. And so I, I challenge you to stand in faith. Regardless of what you see, hear, feel, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so faith is standing when nothing else is standing around you. So I challenge you to stand in faith. And then and the next Sunday was simply, I can do all things. Say all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. And so there is no battle, there is no storm, there is no situation that you and Jesus cannot handle together. Mainly he being the big, the big, the big Jesus, you being the little human. <laughs> Amen. So we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And last Sunday, I just began to share some words with you that I believe the Lord wants us to be reminded of. It's it's not rocket science. It's, it should be a given for all of us, but, but I want to share um, three words and then just kind of unpack those over the next couple of weeks. It's simply these three words, love, lead, and lend. Love, lead, and lend. Loving the lost, leading the blind, and lending to the poor. That's our job. That's our job. We are to be light and salt, we're not here just waiting for the rapture to take place. We are here to take as many people with us as we possibly can. And so God has commissioned us and mandated us as believers, as the church, to love the lost, to lead those that are blind, and to lend to those that are poor. Amen. And so I want to just um, delve into these, um, these issues that I believe that God wants to just impress brand upon our heart concerning loving the lost, leading the blind, and lending to the poor. I want you to know that's God's heart, that is God's passion, and that is God's preoccupation. 
It's God's heart, loving the lost. It's God's passion, loving the lost. It's God's preoccupation, loving the lost. And I want you also to understand that you are God's heart, you are God's passion, and you are God's preoccupation. Why would he love the unlovable that has no heart for him nor the holy? Why would he be so taken with the one who has given himself to another with no thought of God? And why would he waste all of his time on one who has wasted no time on him? And the simple answer is, for God so loved the world, you, that he continues to give. How many is thankful that he loved you before you even knew who he was? I mean, I love that verse in Jeremiah where, where the prophet is trying to figure out this God that is speaking to his heart, and God spoke to Jeremiah and said, before you were ever conceived in the womb, I knew you. And that word knew speaks of intimacy, not just acquaintance. I knew you and I called you by your name. God already, it already named you. And I had anointed you as a prophet to the nation. So that speaks of divine purpose. So before we were ever conceived, before we were one thought in our mother and dad's mind, before the nursery ever was color was decided on that. God already knew you, called you my name, called you for a particular kingdom purpose. That's amazing. Somebody shout amen. amen. So why we do all of this? 2 Peter 3, 9. Take your Bible, turn with us. We'll be running through a lot of word this morning, so just keep that word close to you. Why would God love the unlovable, love the untouchable, why would God do all of that? Peter says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but it's long suffering toward us. How many is grateful that God is patient with you? How many is grateful that God says, Strike three, you're out? God doesn't say that. Amen. Because how many has ever needed the fourth strike? Me. Why is he long-suffering? Because he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He's not willing that any of us fall through the proverbial cracks or that any of us are lost. Ephesians 2 and 1, Paul said, and you, speaking to all of us, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, which is the devil. That, that devil was your leader. He is the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. And then it changes lanes. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love in his heart with which he loved us, even when, even when we were dead in our trespasses, our sins, our failures, our flaws, but he has made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And he has raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ. Why? He loves us. He loves us. He loves us. He loves us because he can. And he loves us because he chooses to. So last week I was trying to comprehend and communicate God's love for us, which is absolutely impossible. God's love for our lostness. I had little kingdom success. I went back and listened to the message and it was pretty weak. So if you gave the offering, you should probably get a refund. But I'm going to try again. I'm going to take another swing at God's love for us. So the first thing we're talking about is, 
is this whole issue of loving the lost. Why does God love the lost? And what does this love look like, feel like, sound like? So I made some statements last week that I want to repeat, reiterate this morning. God's love transcends, goes beyond race and gender and politics and beliefs. His love transcends social status. He doesn't love the rich more than he loves the poor. It goes beyond personal preferences, even goes beyond our ritual of religion. Red and yellow, black and white, they're all precious in his sight. And I say it again, we all stand the same height at the foot of the cross. Amen. He loves a sinner and the saint alike. He loves the broken and the beautiful alike. He loves the dirty and the clean alike. He loves you and he loves me alike. Amen. Amen. Here's the deal. Just because I have a Bible, and don't you love my Bible? This is the new vintage look. That's the attacks of the enemy. But the word of God remains strong. Now here's the deal. God doesn't love me with a Bible any more than he loves you, and you have no Bible. Someone just needs to hear, regardless of where you've been or where you are and what you've done or what you're doing, it doesn't impact the love that God has for you. He loves you in spite of you. That's amazing. We should all be standing and clapping and throwing confetti in the air. Because how many know there's times in our lives that we are unlovable? And all your wives look to your husbands and said, amen. And I said, I do to this. God loves us. I made this statement last week as well. He can't love you any more tomorrow than he loves you today. First John 4, 10, here in his love, here in his love. Okay, definition. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. That's love. And sent his son to be a propitiation, atoning sacrifice. Don't make fun. You can't say it either. <laughs> An atoning sacrifice for our sins. For God so loved the world. For God so loved you and me. Amen. So how did Christ love the world? How did Christ love the world? Because we are as well to love, come on, the lost. So I shared last Sunday, he saw them. He saw them. He refused to look through them. He refused to look beyond them. He saw them. I want you to turn to someone and I want you to see them this morning. We just turn to someone and look into their eyes. I want you to see some people this morning. See them. See them. How did Jesus love the lost? He saw them. Turn with me to Matthew 9, verse 35. Let's read it together. Matthew 9, 35. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. And when he saw the crowds... When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless. He saw their need. He saw their brokenness. He saw their lostness. When he saw the crowd, he was moved with compassion because they were sheep as having no shepherd. He saw them. 
How many is grateful that there came a time in your life that you recognized that he saw you? He saw you in your hopelessness, in your helplessness, in your lostness. Praise God. And the good news, Jesus still sees you. Still sees you. The second thing I want to talk to you about this morning is simply this. The second way in which Christ loved us is simply he touched them. He touches us. Now look in Mark 1 and 40. Mark 1 and 40. It's, it's a powerful example of the love of Christ flowing through the Son of God, touching and ministering as he did. In Mark chapter 1, verse 40, Jesus is ministering. He's with the boys, part of that three and a half years of ministry on this planet. And the Bible says as they were ministering, as they were declaring the kingdom of God, a leper came to Christ, came to Jesus. Notice his stance, begging on his knees. A leper came to Jesus, begging on his knees. And this is what he said. If you want to, you can cleanse me. You can make me clean. And deeply moved, Jesus reached out his hand and touched him and said, I want to. How many is thankful that he still wants to? I want to be clean. Then and there, the leprosy was gone and his skin was smooth and healthy. Somebody shout amen. amen. Now, the, the truth was, we need to understand the background and the setting. The truth was, the law required that a leper stay excluded from society, from all family, cut all ties with family and friends. Once that you contracted this disease called leprosy, I mean, you were, you were isolated from everything that you knew and everyone you loved and placed in a leper colony, literally a death camp. And if anyone was approaching you as a leper, it was your responsibility to cry out, unclean, unclean, no closer, protect yourself. This disease was contagious and infectious according to those days. Leprosy. The disease deformed and disfigured the body. This disease would eat away at the flesh with oozing sores and infected skin. Matter of fact, because that it also attacked the nervous system, there were times that these lepers could not even feel any feeling in their extremities. And as they would sleep, the rats in which the camp they lived in dwelt as well, would come and eat their fingers. They would not even feel the pain because they, they simply had no nerves to those extremities. Oft time, lepers would lose their fingers, their toes, and eventually their limbs. Their fingers would curl up, forming a hideous claw, and their facial changes included the hardening of the skin and the collapsing of the nose. And they were considered contagious infectious and unredeemable. And yet Jesus, deeply moved, reached out and laid his hand on the leper. Why? Because he loved the leper beyond his leprosy. In modern day, the things we're facing today be like Jesus walking into an active COVID ward, unmasked, uncovered, touching, embracing, loving on all disease and dying without thought or consideration of his own well-being or welfare. Why? Because Jesus looks beyond our need and he sees us. And therefore, because he sees us, he touches us. He willingly steps into our pit, into our pain, into our mess, into our hell to bring love and comfort and healing for all of us, all because of his love. So understand this. Before Jesus rescued and redeemed us, 
before Jesus touched us, we were all spiritual lepers, disease and damned. We were all lost because of sin. Amen. For there is none righteous, no, not one. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all need a Savior. We all need us. We were all lost before Jesus. So don't get all conceited about yourself because it wasn't for Jesus. You would have no hope. You'd have no future. You'd have no help. And you'd have no heaven. But because of Jesus, we have hope and help and power and healing and heaven. Glory to God. Put your hands together and thank God for the blessings he's brought to us through Jesus' his son. He loved us enough to touch us. Amen. Luke 10, 30, turn with me to this story. One of the greatest stories Jesus ever shared about loving enough to touch. Loving enough to touch. In Luke 10 and 30, the Bible says, Jesus telling a story. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that same road. And when he saw him, when the priest saw, when the preacher saw him, he passed by on the other side. What an atrocity. So likewise, a Levite, a religious man, when he came to the same place and saw the same man, he as well passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, which was known as a dog, half Jew, half Gentile, the Jews would not even speak to, much less pray for the Samaritans. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where this man was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. And what did he do? He touched him. He went to him and he bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And Jesus said, you go and do likewise. I just, want to, I just want to tell you this morning that God has saved you for more than just sitting in a pew on Sunday morning. He has saved you for more than just paying your tithe every time that he blesses you financially. God has called us to be light in the darkness. God has called you to make a difference where you are. People should sense something different about you. Amen. Because Jesus, the hope of glory, he lives and dwells inside of you. So when you walk into a room, just know that Jesus is walking into that room as well. And he has placed you there to be hope and to be heaven to those that are lost and dying. And so you say, well, Pastor, if you just preach better, Pastor Mike, if you'd sing better, Pastor Josh, if you're just youth better, our church would grow. Listen, don't get me started. You have a circle of influence that God has placed around you, and you are responsible as I with that circle of influence. What are we doing for the cause of the kingdom and those that we have the privilege to touch and to speak into every day? The kingdom should not explode because of better preaching, but because of better ministry coming from all of us. Amen. God's anointed you. God's anointed you with a message. God's given you a testimony. Share it. Come on. Amen. Praise God. That's good preaching. Just a few amens, but I was prepared for a lack of response. I mean, seriously, how long has it been since you've led someone to Christ? 
How long has it been since you've been shared with someone about Jesus? Well, I, I don't want to be, you know, too forward, too invasive. You know, I, I just want them to, to see my life. I understand you need to live the life, but God's given you a mouth for more than just gossip. That's good preaching. Thank you, Mom. But I'm just telling you, when we stand before the Lord, I, I just believe that are there going to be any sheaves, any people, any individuals in our hands that we have been directly responsible for their coming to Christ? Will our hands be full or will our hands be empty? It's going to be difficult to try to explain to Jesus that we weren't proud enough of him to share him with those that were in need of him. You're light and salt. You're light and salt. You're light and salt. You're light and salt. Shine. Be God, a God flavor in a, in a putrefying world. You are light and salt in your business, in your schoolroom, in your cubicle, in your neighborhood. Okay. I'm wrapping it up. Because I see that look in your eyes like you know you have a captive audience and I've already given. I know. You know, this, this, the tragedy of this story is the priest and Levite saw him but refused to touch it. Religious folk that failed, they failed the man. They failed him. Oft times the broken and the bleeding feel more welcome at the local bar than they did the local church. Ain't no one that needs Jesus ever walk through the doors of this building without finding him. Amen. Because if they walk out the same and they're looking for something different, we have failed the test. I failed the test. Or here. This isn't fire insurance. So why did Christ come? Why did Jesus come? Why did God give his son? Well, what is this all about anyway? Just a cool story at Christmas or Easter. It's got to be more than that. It still boils down to the simple fact for God so loved the world because this world was lost and dying in the darkness. But he knew his son his bloodshed would be salvation for all who would simply ask and receive that free gift of redemption. Praise God. Loving the lost is all of us being willing, now listen, is being willing to get our hands bloody in another man's need. That's what loving the lost is all about. If you're not willing to get involved in people's lives, then and it's not Christ in you that's really working as he wish and would. Have you ever have you ever been walking in the hall or maybe at work and and you were meeting someone that you knew was needy? And you just acted like you just kind of acted like you were busy, or you're dodging to the door, or or you stepped in the bathroom and you really didn't even need to. Can I tell you that God places people in your path for a reason? For a reason? Loving the lost is being willing to get our hands bloody in another man's name. I'm telling you, when you get involved with people, it's going to demand your time. It's going to demand sometime your resources. Going to demand a listening ear. 
when you look at the time you spend on someone in need in, in light of eternity without God, it puts it all into perspective. Does it not? Please understand, we are not called to be a country club for the wealthy and the wanted, but a trauma unit for the sick and the hurting. Before Jesus rescued us, redeemed us, touched us, we were all spiritual lepers, broken and bleeding and left for for dead. That's all of us. That's all of us. Jesus stretched out his battered and bloody hands, nailed to an old rugged cross, and cried, I'm touching you and you and you and you and you and you and you. He proved that day that he was willing to get his hands bloody in our knee, in our mess, in our brokenness. May this solidify that fact. wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. One translation says it was for our sins that did that to him, that ripped and tore and crushed him. Our sins And yet he took the punishment that made us whole. And through his bruises, we are healed. Why did he do that? Why did he die for all of us when he was innocent of all charges? Because he was willing to get his hands bloody in our needs, in our mess and our addictions, and our perversions. He loves you, so he touches you. Amen. I close with this scripture in Ephesians 5. Mostly what God does is love you. Mostly what God does is love you. So keep company with him and Learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious, but his love was extravagant. Now hear this. He didn't love you in order to get something from you, but to give everything of himself to you. And then the word says love like this. Don't be cautious. Don't be stingy. Love like this. Love like this. If we're not willing to love the broken of our city, 
we are not willing to reach out and get involved in the chaos that surrounds us in lives of people that we know, then we are as salt that has lost its savor. Not only good to be ground underfoot, And I believe as people stand before God someday, the one question they're going, that God's going to ask them and pose to them is, what have you done with my son? And those that have been covered by the blood, they'll be ushered in to eternal life. And those that have rejected the son, their savior, Jesus, be cast into outer darkness, into hell. But I also believe that there is another twist to that story and that scene. I believe as we stand before God as believers, he's going to ask us that same question. What have you done with my son? What have you done with him? Did you love him enough to share him? Did you love him enough to give him away? Did you love him enough to be be Christ in the flesh? So I believe what God is saying in these days as we approach the coming of Jesus, I'm telling you, folk, listen, things are they're all lining up prophetically. I mean, if you don't see that on a nationwide or worldwide scene, then you're not looking. I mean, all of the prophetic planets are lining up. What does that mean? That means that Jesus is coming very soon. Very soon. For the Lord himself would ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangels. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to see Jesus. And so shall we ever be with him. Comfort one another with these words. I'm telling you, I believe we are just seconds away on the prophetic time clock from that shout from heaven. And what we must do, we must do quickly for the night. The night cometh when no man can work. And I don't want to stand before God someday and he asked me, what did you do with Jesus? What did you do with the blessing of salvation? What did you do with sins forgiven? Did you just wrap it up and place it under your tree and Every time you walk by, just give it a high five and never, ever being willing to extend grace and mercy and love and truth to those that I I placed in your path. That person you ran from, that person that you dodged into the bathroom from, they were there because they needed to hear there's still hope and there's still help. In all due respect, I'm not interested in this church growing by, by the changing of church membership. Are we swapping sheep? That's not kingdom growth. Kingdom growth is salty tears of repentance on the altar of God by reason of your investment into their life and pointing them in the direction of truth. And that truth is Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to, me, to my Father but by me. I just want us to be a soul-saving station. I don't care if we get every quarter. I don't care if if I can articulate beautifully every Sunday. What really matters to God is what we are doing with Jesus. What are you doing with Jesus? He's done so much for us. But what are we doing with him? any blood on our hands hands willing to get 
blood in another man's name. So, Father, I just, I love you. This is what you've given me. For your people, for your church, for this place, this hour, this moment in time. Is that we love the lost as you love them. That we see them as you see them that we touch them as you touch them.